worshiping with us, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ this morning. If you'll join with me in our call to worship. The women stepped out of the wilderness, out of the wilderness of grief and despair and headed to the tomb. The, the angel told them, them Jesus is not here. He, he, not here. he, he has, has risen, just as he said. said. Come and see the place where he lay. Jesus wasn't there. He stepped out of the wilderness into life.
again, I have to say, Happy Easter, for Jesus is alive. And that is good news. In fact, it's more than good news. It's incredible news. It's the best news ever. Before we look at that great news, I'd like to take a few minutes to look at how we got here to this place today. Our Lenten journey started out in the wilderness. And I'd like to once again remind us what the wilderness is. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as an essentially undisturbed, it's an area essentially undisturbed by human activity within its naturally developed life and in that community. Now the Cambridge English Dictionary defines it differently. It says it's an outside area in which plants are left to grow naturally or in a messy way. Well, we have been walking through the wilderness of temptation, of questions, of emptiness, of brokenness, of human nature, and we have stepped out, hopefully, into praise and today into life, new life. And how appropriate is that for us at this time? So Rich and I were talking about the resurrection and thinking about whether or not it means something different for us this year. And we both decided that yes, it does mean something different for us this year. In the past month, we all have watched our lives, our world, our country turn upside down. We've been walking in a wilderness of change and uncertainty. Places seem to be uninhabited now that used to be inhabited. And simple things have become just a little bit messy. The Holy Week story I, might, I have to share is actually a little bit similar. The disciples and followers of Jesus had spent three years being mesmerized by his teachings, mesmerized by this long-awaited Savior, and witnessing the miracles of healing. They had experienced God's love through Jesus Christ in a way they had never experienced before. And then, don't you just hate those two little words? And then, Jesus started talking about death. This was their leader. He couldn't die. No. And then, the religious leaders began criticizing Jesus. And then, Jesus um, seemed to be like a threat to the government. And then, Jesus said that the disciples were going to betray him. And then, they were going to desert him. And then finally, deny him. Never. Couldn't happen. No way. But then, Jesus was walking that lonely walk through the wilderness up to Golgotha, where he was nailed to the cross. Surely this was the time for a miracle, Jesus. Aren't you listening to us, Jesus? We're ready. But then, Joseph of Arimathea was taking and placing Jesus' body in the tomb. Nicodemus was pouring the burial spices on Jesus' body. And then that tomb was closed with this big stone so nobody could get in or out. Now we're talking about wilderness. For many, staying at home seems like they're in this tomb. Maybe some of you have felt that sometime in the past couple weeks, maybe this week. For many, this is the worst ever for them. Out of work, struggling to pay bills, or not being able to be with loved ones. Living in a somewhat constant feeling of anxiety. 
Yet I know for others, they have been in the wilderness a long time. And I know this because I've heard many people say to me, you know, Pastor, I'm sure glad 2019 is over. It was a rough year. Surely 2020 is going to be better. Well, it hasn't been. And even in the midst of the coronavirus, life is still happening. People are still being tested for cancer and long-term illnesses. Some people are still lonely. And I think about those in the nursing home, and yet I, we have to realize and admit that, that they're not visited many, much any other time of the year either. So this isn't really different for so many of them. People are still, um, people are still mourning the loss of loved ones from, 19, from 2019. Um, people are mourning the loss of the tornado that blew through central Tennessee that we don't even think about. It was March 3rd. March 3rd. You know, a little over a month ago, and 24 people were killed in that tornado or tornadoes going through that area. People are still being abused. The tomb is big. And that's where they placed Jesus, in the middle of it all. He was placed in the tomb of our world and our lives. The stone was rolled in front of the tomb so that Jesus' body would not be taken. And then, yeah, we know the miracle, and that's what today is all about. This is why we are together in spirit celebrating today. Now, we can go online and there's all kind of funny um, Easter jokes, but one of the funnies of the, of the kids were asking about resurrection that I liked was, um, one child said, how did Jesus even rise from the grave? Did he just punch out the grave and say, this isn't the last of Jesus? <laughs> I think it happened something like that. But you can decide yourself as I read from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, and then quickly go tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now, do as I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. And they ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. Then they came to him, and they clasped his feet, and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid, for go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. So see, I guess that's what happened. Jesus punched the grave and, and said, oh, This isn't the last of me. And then he went on into the garden. And then there was this earthquake, and that big old stone was rolled away. The guards were so afraid that they just fell like dead men, fell into the ground. And with all of that going on, think about um, what that walk must have been like for Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. I wonder if they felt the earthquake. And then I wondered if they thought about, you know what, maybe we just need to go on back home and try coming sometime later. But they didn't want to. They wanted to get to the tomb. I imagine them almost tiptoeing. Not like anybody was going to hear them, but just kind of tiptoe inside, quiet, afraid. And yet, they just had to see. And they saw 
an angel? What in the world was going on? Were the women breathless? I would have been. They heard the words, do not be afraid. For I know you are looking for Jesus, but he is not here. He has risen, just as I said. Talk about breathlessness and speechless. Well, what can we say? Nothing except he is risen. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. The women ran to go tell the disciples. And as they were running, here comes Jesus. He steps out from behind the cherry tree, which was blooming, by the way, because it was spring. And he says, boom. Well, not really, but almost. Because God, I mean, Matthew's gospel, all it says was, Jesus appeared in front of the Marys. I mean, how else do you think he appeared? Well, that's the only way I could think of. Maybe, maybe it was a different way. But he appeared in front of them, and okay, he said greetings or something. Each version of the Bible has a different way he greeted people, greeted them. But it was incredible. Think about it. Because it was true. Jesus was alive. The women stepped out of the tomb into life at that very moment. They knelt down. They grabbed Jesus' feet. And I mean, they didn't want to let go. Crying with joy, worshiping their Savior because he was alive. Today, as we celebrate Easter, we acknowledge all of those who have been walking through the wilderness of sorrow. Reverend Tracy L. Potter, United Church of Christ Minister for Youth and Young Adult Engagement, uh, shared a writing in the Lenten devotional, Trans The Transformation from Darkness to Light. She wrote this, This Lenten journey we have walked with our Savior as he gracefully handled the uncertainty that life brings to each of us. Jesus stood face to face with tough decisions wondered if his God had left him to fend for himself, and contemplated walking away to something much easier. But he stayed, and he endured so that we might have the ultimate transformation before us today, brokenness to wholeness. And I say, hallelujah, and then I add, and we are able to step out of the wilderness with our risen Savior from sorrow and despair into life, new life. There's been a commercial, not so much in the last couple of weeks, but a commercial on TV that is advertising Universal um, Studios parks. And um, the commercial features actor Keenan Thompson, and he's walking through this office and he asks, do you ever get the urge to go a little crazy? And he says, you know, like, you want to let yourself, whoa. And then he says, but you can't do it here. Of course, it's in the office place, the workplace. And then he said, or here, and they're showing a dentist's office, and some guy's, you know, painfully getting his tooth worked on. And he said, but totally cool here. And there's Universal Studios, um, the theme park, I mean, Universal theme parks. And he says, get it all out. When you're ready to let yourself go, there's only one place to go. Well, Mary Magdalene and Mary knew that. And they were going to that one place so they could get it all out. They just weren't sure what they were going to let out. Because they were thinking they might be letting out their tears and their anger and their sorrow and their grief. But they were ready to let it out. And then the earth quaked, and they saw that angel sitting on the tomb. And those words that they heard, those words they were not expecting to hear. Jesus isn't here in this tomb. He's alive. Whoa! Can you imagine the Mary and Mary going, whoa! I want you all to say it with me. Whoa! Jesus is alive. The women took off running. Because they um, had somewhere to go. They had to go to the disciples to tell them. They were running, and there was Jesus standing right in front of them. Whoa, Jesus really is alive. The joy just flooded their heart and their soul. You can 
can almost feel it. So I asked you this morning, do you ever just want to get a little crazy? When we walk with the women to the tomb, where we're ready to let ourselves woe, and there's only one place to go. The stone has been rolled away. Jesus is not here. Let us step out of the wilderness into life. Whoa, Jesus is alive. Amen. At this time, we're going to do something also a little different, and that would be communion. Um, well, I hope you got the notice, and if not, um, we're going, I'm going to share communion, and at your home, you may take whatever drink you like, and you may take whatever bread, cracker, cookie that you like, and it will be your Holy Communion. Jesus was sitting with the disciples at that Passover feast, and they shared their stories. And while he was doing that, he took time to take the bread. And when he took the bread, he broke it. He said, this is my body, broken for you. And he took the cup and he shared, this is my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is my blood. This is the cup of new life, of the resurrection. Come, Holy Spirit, come upon this bread, this fruit of the vine, that your presence may be known in our lives through the sharing, through the eating of this, your holy meal. May we truly experience the resurrection, resurrection in this day, through this bread and this cup. Amen. Now I invite you at home to break the bread and to eat it. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And to take your cup, right? this is the blood of Christ, this is the cup of our salvation and the resurrection. Take and drink. God, we thank you for this holy meal, for it brings all of us together as one, your body the body of the risen Christ. May we now be strengthened to go forth, to run home as the Marys did, seeing Jesus and sharing it with the world.
celebrating our risen Savior and going with the peace of the Holy Spirit now and always.